All right, so maybe you could just introduce your character a little bit and how, why the fans are going to like fall in love with this character and root for him. Oh, well, all right then. Where are they going to fall in love with him? So I, I, I play Axel Miller on Van Helsing. He's a Marine. He's a guy that basically was assigned to go and uh, collect Vanessa right before all the wheels came off and, and the apocalypse began. Um, and so he, was, he managed to get to the facility where she was, and then, boom, the apocalypse happens, and what, I, I end up being stuck there with her for three years trying to keep her alive. She's been in a coma this whole time. And that's where we find it. That's where we begin our show. That's dedication. Yeah. <laughs> that's why they're going to love this guy, because he's so damn dedicated to keeping her alive <laughs> to that mission. Um, yeah, he's kind of singular in that way. I mean, there's, there, it, it, it is crazy when you put yourself in the mindset of that. They, they, they had to sort of barricade themselves into this hospital. Two and a half years gone by before the, the last group of Marines decided that they were going to risk trying to make it to the military base or something like 30 miles away. Seemingly impossible. One of them makes it back six months later with another group of stragglers and, and you know, I want to let them back in. And, um, and that's when some vampires get in with them, she gets bit, she wakes up miraculously having been in this coma for three years. And that's literally in the first five minutes of the show. Um, so that's how we get introduced to her, this project, and, and, uh, and you know, take it from there, realize that she might be the answer to this, uh, this epidemic, because the vampire that bites her, that wakes her up, immediately collapses and then regains his humanity. So there's something about her, there's something in her blood that counteracts the vampire. How are you able to relate to your character? Are you able to, you know, be able to... Super collaborative in terms of uh, trying to build um, you know, pieces of personality and character traits of the guy, but I just, I, I'm sorry about it on the panel. I just love the idea of getting to be someone that was going to be. Um, it was just never going to give up, no matter what. And and was very self reliant and capable, and, you know, and candy in all those kinds of ways. I had this adventure with my family where we've gone off for two and a half years and lived totally off the grid. Um, we sailed 18,000 miles, we crossed the ocean, the Pacific Ocean twice. Um, and we had all kinds of insane experiences, you know, living three months on a totally deserted atoll and getting blasted by a, a huge hurricane that came through there, tearing off our bows bridge, trying to figure out a way to repair it with nothing. It's all this kind of Robinson Crusoe existence, finding like an old washed up derelict outboard on the outskirts of the Coral Atoll, and pulling the drive shaft out of the thing and using it to rebuild you know, the dolphin striker on the bow sprit, taping it all together. This is like this Mad Max kind of experience. So just having something that you could feel like you brought some of that experience to, you know, having come back to the world, it, it, it was... I was just tickled by the idea of, uh, of being a dude in that circumstance. Well, Simon had mentioned they kind of created the roles for you and Chris after knowing you and kind of what they wanted for the characters based on what you, who you are. So you think they probably drew on your personal experiences to mold that character a little bit better? Oh, yeah, possibly. I mean, they, you know, yeah, for sure. I think they do that. I mean, they have, they have this really long run with Chris and... I think Chris Hardwell is one of my favorite actors that I've ever seen, never mind gotten to work with. And um, the fact that they could take a character who was deaf and mostly mute, almost never speaks, and know that he was going to be able to fill it, and I think he's the most interesting thing on the show. I think he's unbelievable. Um, every time the camera's on him, you're just begging for them not to cut away. But, uh, yeah, so yeah, I think they, they had that in their back pocket. They're like, yeah, we can totally write the deaf guy. Let's have Chris do it. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of badass stuff do you get to do on the show? Kill all the vampires. <laughs> Absolutely you get to demolish vampires in every way you can possibly imagine. With every available item or tool. <laughs> in a hospital. <laughs> so everywhere. We, fly, we get out of there. We, get a, we, we have journeys outside that hospital, for sure. Um, yeah, screwdrivers and spoons, broken mop sticks and machine guns and bombs. 
<laughs> would be trash. It's hilarious. Did you, did you get any kind of um, martial arts training or anything like that, or fighting skills? We didn't have enough lead up time, you know. They were on such a scramble once they got the show greenlit and had a very compressed writer's room, and so it was all just go, 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 hit the ground running as soon as, as, soon as we knew we were doing it. So I'd love to say that they had lots of uh, martial arts training. That would have been really cool. But no, we just uh, we just built those fight scenes as quick as we could. Had an amazing stunt coordinator, amazing stunt team, and uh, yeah, we just built them as best we could. Kind of like how it would happen anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And again, my guy was like, you know, he's out of the motor pool. I wasn't playing some Navy SEAL superstar. I was playing, you know, a, a grunt basically, who was just had the personality type that he was going to step up when, when it was needed. Will you will we be able to see like the, your order? Story from the series, or? I'm curious to know that actually. There, there are, there is, there, episode two is very much an establishing. We, we do flashback and get a sense of um, what's been going on for the last three years and, and just before um, uh, the apocalypse, or the rising. But I don't know how much more of that they're going to do. I hope, I hope some more because it's, it's, it's really fun when you get into that. How do you kill a vampire? Spin. You have to destroy its heart. It's a slow process. <laughs> it didn't make sense when you said it. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, just determination. <laughs> All right, thank you.